Hey guys, Ethereum, 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 Ethereum. This is the tether at the moment. The highest volume is on uh, probably the Polynex, although um, it does vacillate between other exchanges. So it is against the tether, um, which is pretty closely approximating um, what we expect from fiat. Unfortunately for everybody, uh, and I want to say that the rate of descent is reducing and that at some point this will end, but there's further downside here. Um, so I had some comments, you know, when I first warned bearishness on Ethereum and ah oh, ha oh, ha, oh, you're going to be, you're telling us we're going to trade under $200 on Ethereum. Uh, you're so out, you have no idea what you're doing, etc. Well, I'm afraid those comments guys haven't returned, but we have, of course, taken out the $200 level. We've actually traded 170 um, rally 220 looking real soft here um, so what is going on here well I've annotated a chart just to give you some illustration so we had a lot of upside setups so actually we can argue there were nice little um, funnel moments which will be key levels of significance note how they dovetail with other significant levels by the way so that was a funnel on the way up it absolutely ties in with um, the interim that you've had here that you dipped, re-rallied to, slight falling wedge. So we'll probably at some point get a little push down, not run that low one, and then get a bit of a bounce rally and then squeeze again, which could mean then further um, sell-offs. So the original uh, very first setup in a new trend, you can see how it spanked it down to target. There was an excellent target fill. That was your profit. That was your uh, risk. Proper funneling. In fact, there was opportunity to, for you to get tighter than even the funnel uh, so if I just draw this line outside of there there was a full-blown little squeeze in there on the micro time frames you have to drop your time frames when you're funneling anyway that that performed rallied where did it fail it failed in the funnel back down back down squeezing squeezing this is a very good structure inverted HVF um, it's you know it's got what it needs uh, in every aspect bit of a steep uh, second line but then flatter on the third down across all the tops as so the selling is coming down across here so there's proper compression so you know this is what's going down here you know there's proper compression across the tops got to draw these arrows outside of the, all these other annotations otherwise it's then but there's proper compression across the top here anyway so you have your break and you get a little squeeze and then you really just bin it again there are, believe it or not shorter micro time frame there was wind up setups in here why did it wind up was it rallied up to the funnel and then wanted to let go of the key round number at 240 so lots of interesting key round numbers don't forget to look at the scale over here you'll see them being highlighted this was the 200 level just run here's the 180 we're trading 182 at the point of this shot but we have actually slipped a little further and these targets are clustering around around the 140 120 zone um, so the main target I'm assumed a target here so this is uh, quite assumptive um, on the basis that we get this formula that's just a scenario it doesn't have to happen I'm not saying it will happen I'm just uh, scenario casting which is slightly different to forecasting I'm not committing or marrying the view but I'm saying this is one way in which we finish the job and we run a target um, so currently that target is just above 140 on this main uh, pattern over here in terms of time frame um, we still have time for that job to be done um, in other words it hasn't timed out um, and there's a reasonable amount uh, so we'll see what happens uh, in with regards to that but Ethereum against Tether remaining uh, sick looking however it had a, a reasonable little rally there um, but that was a big spill through a key funnel point there on the way up a big spill there was another little funnel point and this is fascinating as you see all these lines confluencing with the low three you see the low three that's one of the most critical elements the trigger point where you expect support so that last funnel there just setting up the steps on the way down but it was broken by the one and the two so that just warns you that it will be overrun um, when these buy the dip guys get hammered and shaken out so there's further potential downside on ethereum um, potentially as i say to 140s um, so the guys that didn't believe me will see 200 sub 200s um, are probably not going to believe that we might see 140s hey it's a probability based uh, assessment this it can be uh, incorrect um, and inaccurate uh, we're just seeing weakness also on bitcoin so i've just done a clip on bitcoin and that is looking potential for down to 1500 so ethereum has relatively underperformed bitcoin it's done even worse than bitcoin so far um, in the sell-off state 
and I would say there's uh, a concern that this uh, that that this could remain the case, or they both could be going down at a similar rate if they go down. This is not going to bode particularly well for cryptos as a category. Uh, so I'm sounding a bit bearish. This is not going to bode particularly well for cryptos as a category if both Ether and Bitcoin are getting spanked. They do in normal markets where it's not an absolute raging bull and they're both streaking and it's not an absolute bear where they're both spilling. They do have a slightly inverse relationship. So the fact that they both look like they've got downside against the dollar is probably talking uh, to a pretty bear crypto market for now. Smart thing to do, have some powder dry, have some money on uh, in the locker, keep accumulating it. The buying the uh, shakeout bulls that are hodling forever and a day and getting real pained um, will come your way. And maybe a few leveraged hand shakeouts um, could take place, maybe a few spike downs, so some very low um, by the by, the extreme dip orders may serve you well. Um, that requires you to have a little bit of Bitcoin to have those orders left in the system um, in most instances. So, you know, have a bit of tether, have a bit of fiat and have some cheeky orders out there for uh, any potential smashdowns if we have any, let's say, inverted commas denial of service events or any other leverage shakeouts uh, which could see real dips. So that's a strategy for now. And, and then picking, you know, uh, value picking on some awesome uh, small caps. I'm going to be uh, having a chat with Marshall later on today and I'll get that YouTube up talking about metal and his business and also very interesting insights around the industry as a whole. So, um, you know, that will be, that'll be fascinating and I look forward to getting that one up and sharing it with you. Okay, okay, okay. I uh, hope you find that useful. And that is our Ethereum take. Uh, potential for further downside. Longer run, though, I'm getting the slight feeling that the descent is actually reducing. So if we just look at this and I do some um, general lines, if we look at this chart on a bigger time frame. So let's just try. Uh, some people hate it when you talk bear, bear, bear. They think you're negative. It's not negativity. It's acknowledging the market for what it is. But longer run, let me just try to get a bigger view. There is some there is some potential that we will get some respite. So let's just get that selected so I can get common sense out of this chart here. Um, longer run, there's some uh, semblance of some respite. These long wicks, possibly, as I say, we can have at some point a structure that looks like a long time frame uh, falling wedge which will lead to an upside pop that could quite potentially occur post the target being made in other words every last bear every last bull that can't hold on any longer is now shaken out and then boom there's no more weak sellers there's no more weak uh, sellers sitting in the ethereum and only the real die-hard hodlers um, who got in so early that it still doesn't matter, they deep in the black, eventually get a pop out to the top. So this is a chart worth keeping in mind. So often you melt out the bottom of a falling wedge um, just at the last moment. Wedges are tricky you could, and difficult to trade. They squeezes, but they're not horizontal squeezes. So you get a little dip out the bottom, maybe targets run, and then you get that first pop. You get a return move, and then you get a secondary pop that is even stronger. And you could then go towards a wind up to a nice H2, which could make this all one big macro pattern. So I just want to finish on a slightly more encouraging note. But right now, the smart money is on the sidelines, um, unless you're prepared to really sit it right the way out. So that's a little bit of a bull projection for you on a falling wedge. This is not, an, there were periods of capitulation on the smaller time frame, but if you look at this on a daily, in terms of where we've been, it does this is super super impulsive on the way up went a bit hyperbolic and this is tactical retreat buying you can see it on the hammers there you can see it on those tails there um, and drifting and tightening and tightening so eventually when we tighten this squeeze eventually you know a lot of the weak hands are shaken out eventually by then so there will be respite at some point for Ethereum. It's not here yet in my view. Not here yet in my view. Potential for further downsides, but the buying day will come. Okay, that's Francis. I'm going to take a snapshot of that bigger picture and give it a little tweet out. Make sure you're following on The Crypto Sniper. So Twitter, at The Crypto Sniper. 
at the Crypto Sniper. And that way you will get notified um, when the interview with Marshall goes live on YouTube. Uh, and you'll get lots of other hit you up stuff on Metal. So save your charts like I'm just doing now um, with all your ideas. And we'll be talking soon. And that's your update on Ethereum relative to um, a fiat, which is pretty bearish. I should probably just run you very quickly if we're doing Ethereum on b versus Bitcoin as well. So while I'm winding down, let me just finish that one. Still a grind line here. Scope to sell off through that. A little bit of wicks coming in here, giving me a bit of a relative high too with potential for a little bit of an off sell there. So also graduated lot selling. If you look at on the bigger time frames, let's take this up to the daily for you all to see. Um, you can see how it's overperformed relative to Bitcoin. Lots of continuation patterns all the way up. Bounced in this funnel, caught between the two funnels, squeezing, 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 could dip down first before winding and maybe getting up above it. But at this grind line probably needs to surrender, uh, in my view, to the downside. There it is on the shorter time frame. Um, so I'd expect it to surrender. But eventually, one of these two tr um, the zones against Bitcoin will need to give up. And that's when we'll bounce. And that's the nine, uh, the nine fives to nine sixes there will fail. In other words, we'll pop up once we've maybe dipped a bit through here. or uh, further downside, we'll see the 7.6 run as it was there. It was tested and run, temporary supported, but we'll see. So it's trapped in between um, two very key layers. This was very strong support on the way down, by the way, and you you know you got bounced really impulsively up, and everyone thought that you know that was the big that was the end of that, and then you got squeezed again just to wind up to smash through it, and then you dip through it. So. Mm, Scope for a little bit more downside, um, but the whole overall view when you look at the bigger time frame, as, as I've already said, you know, you can have Fibonacci pullbacks if we take this right from this very, very low vol period relatively right back here. People have to remember that an, of an already pretty dynamically moving Bitcoin was absolutely overperformed by uh, Ethereum. Uh, well, Ethereum totally overperformed it. And as yet, this is at 50%. It's a perfect 50% for bounce, as you can see there. That's how the bodies are there and it's a wick bounce. Um, there's still scope for this to go right the way down to a 38.2 and still be in a, um, a bull market. So um, that's, that's the thing. When you look at these massive breakups, Actually, it puts some context into these capitulations. Eventually, the value will come. I do think we got another little stab down in us, and we're going to, you know, decide which way we're going in terms of these continuation layers that we have. Okay, recapping, but I wanted to also give you the view against Bitcoin um, so that you can see that. Remember, if Bitcoin is also losing value, Ethereum can afford to lose value against dollar and still remain in this trading range between these two funnel points because Bitcoin is um, slipping as well. So it could be a little bit of a rocky time for the crypto market. That's my take. I don't want to wax lyrical any longer. You want to find out more about what it is we do and how we utilize the HVF method, get in touch at support at the market sniper. Um, if you're interested in investing in an asset management uh, fund, in the crypto space, um, working with a really dynamic crews, getting us access to brilliant uh, inside uh, information and skilled folk. Uh, get in touch on francis at alphabet.fund. Francis at alphabet.fund. A secondary email there, francis at alphabet.fund. Okay, look forward to talking to you all, um, and we'll be catching up soon. Enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. Play safe, play small, play defensive right now. Yes.